This is part 30 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery mouse events. Let's understand these mouse events with an example. Notice that next to every form field, we have an image displayed. Now, when we move the mouse over this image, we want to display the help text that is associated with that field. And when we move the mouse away from the image, we want to hide that help text. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. I've done a couple of changes to this project. The first change is that I've added this image help.png to this project. And the second change is to this HTML itself. So to every row, I've added these two TDs. So within the first TD, we've got the image element. And notice the source attribute. It is set to this image help.png. And within this TD, we've got the div element. So this is the div element that displays the help text. So this help text is for the first name field. And look at what the help text says, first name as shown in passport. And look at the style attribute. It is set to display colon none, meaning when the page initially loads, the div elements are hidden. Only the image element is shown. And the important thing to keep in mind here is the ID attribute value of both the image and div elements. Now, if you look at the ID attribute value, the only difference is within the first three characters. So for image element, it is IMG, first name help. And for the div element, it is DIV, first name help. All right. Now, I have added these two TDs for all the TRs on this page, basically for all the fields. So even for the last name, we have got those two TDs. So within this TD, we have got the image. And here we've got the div element, which contains the help text. I'll have all this HTML available on my blog in case you need it. Now, at the moment, when we view this HTML in the browser, this is how it looks like. And notice, when I move the mouse over, nothing happens. The div doesn't show up. So on mouse over, we want to display the div that contains the help text. And on mouse out, we want to hide that. So within the script section, within our ready function, Let's first find this image element. And if you look at this image element, it has got the ID. So let's use the ID selector. And ID selector is hash. And the ID that we want to find is image first name help. OK? So look at this. When I type MO, we can find all the mouse events, mouse down, mouse enter, etc. So when mouse over event occurs, we want to handle that. OK? So what do we want to do when we mouse over this image? We want to display the div that contains the help text. So we want to find that div. And the div also has got an ID, so we can use the ID selector again. So find the div by ID. And the ID that we are looking for is div first name help. So we found the ID. So what do we want to do? We want to slowly fade in that div element. So it shows up the help text. So I'm going to use this fade in function. And since this is going to animate it, we can specify the speed for the animation. So the speed is going to be 500 milliseconds. So it's going to take half a second to slowly fade in to display the help text associated with first name fail. OK, so that's what happens on mouse over. And to this, I'm also going to chain mouse out event. Look at that mouse out. So we want to handle that event as well. And on mouse out, what do we want to do? We want to hide the div element. So again, I'm going to find the div element by ID. But this time, on mouse out, what do we want to do? We want to hide the div element. So I'm going to use fade out. Slow, so it's going to slowly fade out. OK, so let's save the changes. And let's reload this page. And look at this. When I move the mouse over this first name field, the div that is associated with first name field, which contains the help text, shows up. And on mouse out, look at that, it fades out. And at the moment, the help text only works for first name field. It doesn't work for last name, you know, for any other field on this form. Why is that? That's because we have hard coded the IDs of the image and development here. So let's make this a little more generic so it works for all these fields. Okay. So first of all, we want to remove this hard coding right here. 
we just don't want to find the first element we want to find all the image elements so what I'm going to do is instead of using the ID selector I'm going to use element selector so I'm basically telling find me all images now let's you know add a little more filtering to this selector instead of saying find all images so this is going to find any image element on this page instead of that let's only target those image elements which has got the source attribute set to help.png so I'm going to copy that I'm going to say find all image elements which have got source attribute set to help.png okay so this is going to find all these help images so once we have those image elements, you know, we are uh, attaching mouse over and mouse out events. So on mouse over, what do we want to do? Now the important thing here, again, we have hard coding. Okay, we don't want that hard coding. So what I'm going to do is use a variable here and let's call this help icon ID. So basically what we are trying to do is get the image element ID. And how can we get the image element ID? Look at this. This mouse over event occurs on the image element. Okay, so within the mouse over event handling function, I can use this keyword. And what does this keyword refers to? This refers to the element on which mouse over event occurred. Okay, the image element. And then I can use this jQuery ATTR function and retrieve the ID attribute value. So it's as simple as that. So now this variable contains, you know, for example, if I move the mouse over, let's say, first name image, then this variable is going to contain the ID of the first name um, image. Okay. And if you look at the difference within the ID attribute values, the only difference is in the first three characters. So the image element contains IMG first name help and the div element contains div first name help. So all I need to do is replace that word img, those three characters, with div. Okay, so I'm going to take this variable and let's create another variable. Let's call this div id equals help icon id dot replace. And what do we want to replace? We want to replace these three characters img with div. All right, so we've got the div ID. So we are going to use this variable. So now let's go ahead and remove this hard coding from here. So I still want to use the ID selector, but the ID is now going to be in this variable div ID. And then we want to fade in. Okay, so I'm going to copy these two lines and paste them in mouse out as well because we want to remove this hard coding also and then let's use this divide variable okay so to that let's append divide so let's save the changes now let's reload this page and notice this when I move the mouse over city we get the help text favorite color it works so all the fields are now working okay now if you look at the code here we've got some duplication okay so basically these two lines are duplicated let's actually move those two lines to a separate function so you know we don't have that duplication so let's call this function get div id and i'm going to copy these two lines and paste them within this function now instead of using this keyword here let's actually use a parameter let's pass help icon or help image to this function and we are going to use that parameter here okay and instead of using this variable we can simply say return whatever value okay now let's go ahead and use this function instead of these two lines so we can actually remove those two lines and we can in fact use this method directly here because that's going to get us the divide and the same here all right so let's save those changes reload this page and it should still work the same way okay look at that it doesn't work why is that that's basically because we are calling this function 
but we are not passing the element over which that event occurred okay so we have to pass that element so we use this keyword here and this keyword here so what is this going to do it's going to pass the element over which the respective event has occurred mouse over or mouse out okay so let's save the changes now let's reload this and look at this it works now okay so in this example we are using mouse over and mouse out events now instead of those two events we could also use mouse enter and mouse leave so instead of mouse over we can use mouse enter and instead of mouse out we can have use mouse leave so let's save the changes reload this page and it should still work on you know mouse enter it works on mouse leave it works okay and here is that example now instead of mouse enter and mouse leave we could also use hover hover function accepts two function arguments one for mouse enter event and one for mouse uh, leave event so here is the hover function and it's a shorthand for mouse enter and mouse leave so at the moment we're using mouse enter and mouse leave instead of that we can use hover function which is a shorthand so hover and if you look at this one look at that we need to pass two function arguments okay so I'm going to remove the mouse enter from here so we are passing the first function and then so that function ends here and I'm going to remove this and pass the second function so let's save the changes reload the page and it should still work so here we're using the hover function and passing the two function arguments thank you for listening and have a great day